Hello everyone, welcome to my channel, or if you're a frequent visitor, welcome back. Today I'll be reading to you a fairy tale that's very common nowadays, but I'll be reading to you the lesser known version. This is the Grimm's Fairy Tales, and I'll be reading to you Cinderella. The wife of a rich man fell sick, and as she felt that her end was drawing near, she called her only daughter to her bedside and said, Dear child, be good and pious, and then the good God will always protect you, and I will look down on you from heaven and be near you. Thereupon she closed her eyes and departed. Every day the maiden went out to her mother's grave and wept and she remained pious and good. When winter came, the snow spread a white sheet over the grave, and by the time the spring sun had drawn it off again, the man had taken another wife. The woman had brought with her into the house two daughters, who were beautiful and fair of face, but vile and black of heart. Now began a bad time for the poor stepchild, is the stupid goose to sit in the parlour with us, they said. He who wants to eat bread must earn it. Out with the kitchen, wench. They took her pretty clothes away from her and put on an old grey bedgown on her and gave her wooden shoes. Just look at the proud princess, how decked out she is, he cried and laughed and led her into the kitchen. There she had to do hard work, from morning till night. Get up before daybreak, carry war, light fires, cook and wash. Besides this, the sisters did her every imaginable injury. They mocked her and emptied her peas and lentils into the ashes so that she was forced to sit and pick them out again. In the evening, when she had worked till she was weary and had no bed to go to, but had to sleep by the hearth in the cinders. And on that account, as she always looked dusty and dirty, they called her Cinderella. It happened that the father was once going to the fair, and he asked his two stepdaughters what he should bring back for them. Beautiful dresses, said one. Pearls and jewels, said the second. And you, Cinderella? He asked. What will you have? Father, break off for me the first branch which knocks against your hat on the way home. So he brought beautiful dresses, pearls and jewels for his two stepdaughters, and on his way home, as he was riding through a green thicket, a hazel twig brushed against him and knocked off his hat. Then he broke off the branch and took it with him. When he reached home, he gave his stepdaughters the things which they had wished for, and to Cinderella he gave the branch from the hazel bush. Cinderella thanked him, went to her mother's grave and planted the branch on it and wept so much that the tears fell down on it and watered it and it grew and became a handsome tree. Thrice a day Cinderella went and sat beneath it and wept and prayed and a little white bird always came on the tree and if Cinderella expressed a wish the bird threw down whatever she had wished for. It happened, however, that the king gave orders for a festival which was to last three days and to which all the beautiful young girls in the country were invited in order that his son might choose himself a bride. When the two stepsisters heard that they too were to appear among the number, they were delighted, called Cinderella and said, comb our hair for us, brush our shoes and fasten our buckles for we are going to the wedding at the king's palace. Cinderella obeyed but wept because she too would have liked to go with them to the dance and begged her stepmother to allow her to do so. You go, Cinderella, she said, covered in dust and dirt as you are, and would go to the festival. You have no clothes and shoes, and yet would dance. As however, Cinderella went on asking. The stepmother said at last, I have emptied a dish of lentils into the ashes for you, 
If you have picked them out again in two hours, you shall go with us. The maiden went through the back door into the garden and called, You tame pigeons, you turtle doves, and all you birds beneath the sky, come and help me to pick. The good into the pot, the bad into the crop. The two white pigeons came in by the kitchen window, and afterwards the turtle doves. And at last, all the birds beneath the sky came whirring and crowding in, and alighted amongst the ashes. And the pigeons nodded with their heads and began pick, 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 pick. And the rest began to also pick, 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 pick. And gathered all the good grains into the dish. Hardly had one hour passed before they had finished and all flew out again. Then the girl took the dish to her stepmother and was glad and believed that now she would be allowed to go with them to the festival. But the stepmother said, no Cinderella, you have no clothes and you cannot dance. You would only be laughed at. And as Cinderella wept at this, the stepmother said, if you can pick two dishes of lentils out of the ashes for me in one hour, you shall go with us. And she thought to herself that she most certainly cannot do it again. When the stepmother had emptied the two dishes of lentils amongst the ashes, the maiden went through the back door into the garden and cried, You tame pigeons, you turtle doves, and all you birds beneath the sky, come and help me to pick the good into the pot, the bad into the crop. The two white pigeons came in by the kitchen window, and afterwards the turtle doves, and at length, all the birds beneath the sky came whirring and crowding in, and alighted amongst the ashes, and the doves nodded with their heads and began, pick, 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 and the others all began to also pick, 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 and gathered all the good seeds into the dishes, and before half an hour was over, they had already finished and all flew out again. Then the maiden was delighted and believed that she might now go with them to the wedding. But the stepmother said, All this will not help. You cannot go with us, for you have no clothes and cannot dance. We should be ashamed of you. On this, she turned her back on Cinderella and hurried away with her two proud daughters. As no one was now at home, Cinderella went to her mother's grave beneath the hazel tree and cried, Shiver and quiver, little tree. Silver and gold threw down on me. Then the birds threw a gold and silver dress down to her and slippers embroidered with silk and silver. She put on the dress with all speed and went to the wedding. Her stepsisters and the stepmother, however, did not know her and thought she may be a foreign princess for she looked so beautiful in that golden dress. They never once thought of Cinderella and believed that she was sitting at home in the dirt picking lentils out of the ashes. The prince approached her, took her by the hand and danced with her. He would dance with no other maiden and never let loose of her hand. If anyone else came to invite her, he said, this is my partner. She danced till it was evening and then she wanted to go home. But the king's son said, I will go with you and bear you company for he wished to see whom the beautiful maiden belonged. She escaped from him, however, and sprang into the pigeon house. The king's son waited until her father came, and then he told him that the unknown maiden had leapt into the pigeon house. The old man thought, can it be Cinderella? And they had to bring him an axe and a pickaxe that he might hew the pigeon house to pieces, but no one was inside. And when they got home, Cinderella lay in her dirty clothes amongst the ashes, and a dim lit oil lamp was burning on the mantelpiece for Cinderella had jumped quickly down from the back of the pigeon house and had run to the little hazel tree, and there she had taken off her beautiful clothes and laid them on the grave, and the bird had taken them away again. Then she had seated herself in the kitchen amongst the ashes in her grey gown. The next day, when the festival began afresh and her parents and steps had gone once more, Cinderella went to the hazel tree and said, Shiver and quiver, my little tree, Silver and gold throw down over me. The birds threw down his much more beautiful dress than on the preceding day. And when Cinderella appeared at the wedding in this dress, everyone was astonished at her beauty. The king's son had waited until she came, 
Insula took her by the hand and danced with no one but her. When others came and invited her, he said, This is my partner. When evening came, she wished to leave, and the king's son followed her and wanted to see into which house she went. But she sprang away from him and into the garden behind the house. There stood a beautiful tall tree on which hung the most magnificent pears. She clambered so nimbly between the branches like a squirrel that the king's son did not know where she had gone. He had waited until her father came and said to him, The unknown maiden has escaped from me and I believe she has climbed up the pear tree. The father thought, Can it be Cinderella? And an axe brought and cut the tree down, but no one was on it. And when they got into the kitchen, Cinderella lay there amongst the ashes, as usual, for he, she had jumped down on the other side of the tree, had taken the beautiful dress of the bird on the little hazel tree, and put on her grey gown. On the third day, when the parents and sisters had gone away, Cinderella went once more to her mother's grave and said to the little tree, Shiver and quiver, my little tree, silver and gold throw down on me. And now the bird threw down to her a dress which was more splendid and magnificent than she had yet had, and the slippers were golden. When she went to the festival in the dress, no one knew how to speak for astonishment. The king's sons danced with her only, and if anyone invited her to dance, he said, this is my partner. When evening came, Cinderella wished to leave, and the king's son was anxious to go with her, but she escaped from him so quickly that he could not follow her. The king's son, however, had employed a ruse, and had caught the whole staircase to be smeared with pitch, and there, when she ran down, had the maiden's left slipper remain stuck. The king's son picked it up, and it was small and dainty and all golden. Next morning he went with it to the father and said to him, No one shall be my wife but she whose foot this golden slipper fits. And then were two sisters glad, for they had pretty feet. The eldest went with the shoe into her room and wanted to try it on, and her mother stood by, but she could not get her big toe into it. The shoe was too small for her. Then the mother gave her a knife and said, cut the toe off. When you are queen, you will have no more need to go on foot. The maiden cut the toe off, forced the foot into the shoe and swallowed the pain and went out to the king's son. Then he took her on his horse as his bride and rode away with her. They were obliged, however, to pass the grave and there on this hazel tree sat two pigeons and cried, turn and peep, turn and peep, there's blood within the shoe. It's shoe, it is too small for her. The true bride waits for you. When he looked at her foot and saw how the blood was trickling from it, he turned his horse around and took the false bride home again and said she was not the true one and that the other sister was to put the shoe on. Then this one went into her chamber and got her toes safely into the shoe, but her heel was too large. So her mother gave her the knife and said, cut a bit off of your heel. When you are queen, you will have no more need to go on foot. The maiden cut a bit off her heel, forced her foot into the shoe, swallowed the pain and went out to the king's son. He took her on his horse as his bride and rode away with her. But when they passed by the hazel tree once more, the two pigeons sat on it and cried, Turn and peep, turn and peep, there's blood within the shoe. The shoe, it is too small for her. The true bride waits for you. He looked down at her foot and saw how the blood was running out of her shoe and how it had stained her white stocking quite red. Then he turned his horse and took the false bride home again. This is also not the right one, he said. Have you no other daughter? No, said the man. There is still a little stunted kitchen wench which my late wife behind her. But she can no possibly be the bride. The king's son said he is to send her up, but the mother answered, Oh no. She is much too dirty. She cannot show herself. But he absolutely insisted on it, and Cinderella had to be called. She first washed her hands and face clean, and went and bowed down before the king's son, who gave her the golden shoe. Then she seated herself on a stool, drew her foot out of her heavy wooden shoe, and put it into the slipper, which fitted like a glove. And when she rose up and the king's son looked at her face, he recognised the beautiful maiden 
who had danced with him and cried, That is the true bride. The stepmother and the two sisters were horrified and became pale with rage. He, however, took Cinderella on his horse and rode away with her. As they passed by the hazel tree, the two white doves cried, Turn and peep, turn and peep, there's blood within the shoe. The shoe is much too small for her, the true bride waits for you. And when they had cried that, the two came down and placed themselves on Cinderella's shoulder, one on the right, the other on the left, and remained sitting there. When the wedding with the king's son was to be celebrated, the two false sisters came and wanted to get into favour with Cinderella and share her good fortune. When the betrothed couple went to church, the elder was at the right side and the younger at the left, and the pigeons pecked out one eye from each of them. Afterwards, as they came back, the elder was at the left and the younger was at the right, and the pigeons pecked out the other eye from each. And thus, for their wickedness and falsehoods, they were punished with blindness for all their days. Hope you enjoyed that. It's a bit darker than the original story. Thank you for joining me tonight. Hope you have a wonderful day. Stay well, stay safe, stay special.